Hey everybody, how's it going today? Uh, first of all, on behalf of Adult Swim, thanks to Apple for having us today. Um, entering its eighth season, Robot Chicken has been consistently been one of Adult Swim's highest rated originals since its premiere in 2005. So please join me in welcoming to the stage some of the talented writers and producers responsible for this amazing and hilarious show. First of all, I have uh, co-creator, EP actor, and one of the hardest working men in show business, Mr. Seth Green. This is like the most intimate VH1 storytellers ever. You guys getting your Apple Care? Could not more highly recommend the Apple Care, guys. Seems like the insurance you're never going to need, and then you drop your phone. I know, right? And you're like, oh no, am I going to give $50 to some stranger in the street to put non-licensed Apple products on my phone? If you paid for Apple Care, you just go, uh, Don't have uh, a worry, right? And they go, hey, 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 shh, shh, shh. Here you go. Okay, we also today have uh, <laughs> another Apple enthusiast. Uh, Thanks, Keith. <laughs> actor and writer, Brecken Meyer. Uh-oh. <laughs> Security, can we check this backpack, please? I like that you wouldn't kidding. even leave that backstage. Like, no, I don't know what these people are gonna do. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna Trust happen. Trust no one, Brecken. Yeah. So the trains are down. <laughs> it looks like the trains are not running at the speed that they should. We have co-head writer and executive producer Tom Roots. <laughs> Look at that dog. Hi. That dog's like, why am I at an Apple store? Why am I wearing sneakers? <laughs> Hi, Tom Root. I think, uh, Hi, everybody. Yeah, has your mic. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we have uh, this year's director, Mr. Tom Shepard. Look at all the people here. I guess we should also mention uh, one person who's missing today. and uh, It's Matt Senreich, guys, co-creator, star of Robot Chicken, plays The Flash. Matthew Senreich. <laughs> Couldn't make it today. He's very, uh, very upset yeah. he couldn't make it. But please uh, tweet him. That's the truth. At Matt's Twitter is at W I Z M A T T S, Wiz Matt S. Tweet Matt. Please do. Tell yeah. him yeah, well whatever soon. you want, guys. You do whatever you want. But he really was insistent that people be tweeting him. Which makes it seem less enjoyable. But <laughs> <laughs> So, Seth, uh, why don't you. Why don't we go back in history a little bit and tell me who had the idea for this show and how it all was developed back in the day. Sure thing, Keith. That implies that there was any organized plan at all, <laughs> rather than just a series of things that happened one right after another to put us on television. Um, well, there's this thing called the internet, and uh, pre-broadband, there was dial-up technology, and a lot of uh, intrepid developers were trying to create linear content for a portal platform similar to YouTube. So Matt and I wanted to make this short. We were trying to figure out how to make stop motion. Uh, somebody from Sony Digital was... Why stop motion? Because, you know, we wanted the toys to look like toys, and so we wanted them to move like they were toys, but they were alive. And stop motion is the best way to use the actual things. But while we were trying to come up with this idea and figure out how to shoot it, Sony, which had a little bit of seed money to explore this internet thing, uh, they, allowed, they financed 12 four-minute shorts, which was everything from the real-world Metropolis to the Scarlet Letter 2. And so then we took that 40 minutes of content <laughs> and we shopped it around for the next four years while both things like uh, linear content portals on broadband internet and things like the Adult Swim came into existence. So you guys at the Adult Swim have been doing a lot of repurposed uh, original animation, shows like Space Ghost, and had very little exactly. original programming right. save for thing. I think Aqua Teen was one of the earliest original programs. Aqua Teen, C Lab 2020, Space Ghost, of but course. But even, even C Lab was like repurposed original animation with new oh, yeah. animation Absolutely, runs. absolutely. So Army we, Birdman, yeah. We, we didn't know that there was even a place that anybody would watch anything like this. We sure as hell didn't think there would be an audience for it, right? Tom had been working at Wizard with Matt. We all just made this really silly thing for the internet. 
No, we were just excited that we could, because we all loved action figures so much, actually get to put them in front of cameras and make up little adventures with them. Yeah, but you and never assumed that that would be a program that no. people would watch that would continue for 10 years. No, this would, was our hobby. And if we had to do it over again, maybe we would have done some things differently. Because <laughs> it's a very difficult It's sort of uh, like process. your permanent record. When you realize that people are paying attention to whether or not you're arrested, you're like, oh, I shouldn't have gotten arrested. It's also sort of a, like when your first band has a huge hit and you realize you're in this band forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's and sort you, of like and that you hate each other. Yeah, you just <laughs> so so. Hey, do, you rem- do you remember our first meeting? I, I do remember in the Space Ghost office in Santa Monica. When you say Space Ghost office, it, it implies that there was an actual <laughs> building or like people working there. It was there. an actual building. Thank and you. This was Space Ghost. <laughs> has anybody ever seen the movie The Game with Sean Penn and Michael Douglas? You know how Michael Douglas shows up at one point and that whole place that used to be filled with people and phones and computers is suddenly empty with just like (laughs) cords in the center and there's like one desk in the corner with a chair turned on its side? That's what this office seemed like when Matt and I first walked into it. Well, you know what the office really was, right? No. It was AOL. Oh, so they were on the way down? Yeah, they were on the way out. (laughs) And uh, we swooped in and grabbed uh, a couple of cubes, right? And it was the biggest no-brainer, really, in the history of television because these guys came in with these already produced shorts. And, you know, we, it was no words on paper. It was just actual animation. And we said, hell yeah, we'll make this show. You know, we're, we're always looking for something different. We had no stop motion. These guys are talented. And it was like, yeah, slam dunk. I love you, Keith. Love you too, Seth. I wasn't <laughs> at that meeting, but I remember Matt said, you know, the president of the network said... He hates stop motion. <laughs> he still does. Yes. Yeah. La- yeah, yeah. Lazo's, Except for the show. Lazo's actual words were, now I don't like stop motion animation, but I guess your show is funny. And and Matt and I walked out of that office like, is that, did we just sell a show? Is that what that right. is? Do we have to figure out how to make this now? Right, exactly. So, Brecken, how did you get involved with the show? What or attracted you to the show? Uh... I mean, you know, Seth and I were always kind of goofing off. We had an office together with another guy, and we would always, it was like a clubhouse, and we would just write funny ideas on the board. And Seth, I mean, it originally started when you were going to do Conan. And you had. Yeah, all the Sweet J stuff came out of Conan. Sweet Sweet J stuff was he was going to do Conan and had nothing to talk about. So (laughs) he's going to do this special. And so we just did voices and stuff. And honestly, I mean, it's been 10 years now, but my whole purpose of it and I think most of us is just to make each other laugh yeah. and when I do voices on it it is literally I look at Sethi when he's in the glass and I'm just trying to make him laugh in that little square and that's it's been that way for 10 years is just if it takes me doing a silly voice or throwing my clothes off or whatever it's just to make Seth laugh and if it ends up in the show all right you know Brecken, Brecken desperately wants your your approval guys yeah <laughs> so he will kill himself to entertain you. Yeah. Are you not entertained? So, uh, Tom Shepard, you're the newest member of the group here. How did you get involved uh, with uh, the show? I was arrested. It was a community service <laughs> thing. And, uh, you know, these programs work because you can actually get legitimate employment out of it. So if you get the opportunity, just jump on in because you never know. What's going to happen? It's better it's than the work. real story. Yeah. And how has it been uh, transitioning to director this season? It's it's a it's a complete madhouse, but it's uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's um, it, it's the greatest job in the world. Like it's every day I wake up and can't believe that I actually get to play with toys for a living and uh, work with these idiots. <laughs> He's talking about us. Especially Brecken. <laughs> well, let's talk about the production process for a minute. How long does it take typically to produce a season of the show? It's roughly uh, 12 to 15 months to produce a season. What we've done for the last several years is produce a half-hour special to launch the season, something like the Star Wars or the DC specials. Because putting your focus on a half-hour like that helps you really get the shop set up, gets everybody's enthusiasm. You do a lot of building for it, plus you make something that everybody's excited about. And then we work for the next... You know, 18 months, 18 weeks, <laughs> 18. <laughs> 16, 18 weeks. I don't know. Right. So uh, over the 10 years, what have you had to learn about the production process, making stop motion, and, or what have you had to unlearn? Um, well, I came from film, and so stop motion is really just like shooting cinema in that you build all the sets, you fabricate all the clothing. You, you wind up casting 
three times because you cast the actor, you cast the puppet, and then you cast the animator to make them come to life. So all three of those performers have to work together to make something really happen. Um, so I learned a lot of patience, and I learned to plan, um, and I learned that no matter what happens when everything goes wrong, you just gotta figure out how to make it. Why'd you look at me when you said plan? I just looked at the whole group, really. No, you looked right at me. I looked at, at you. Yeah, yeah. But like, Brecken, but, you got a plan. I know, I got it. Yeah, I'm going to Mariah Carey. I you you got a plan. I love Christina Aguilera, your ass. <laughs> you got a plan. Ah, Christina Aguilera, your ass right here. So, Tom Root, you've been there since the beginning. Uh, have you noticed anything different? I mean, how's, how's the process evolved over the years? <laughs> um, it, it started, um, we were just winging it to begin with and we found out really quickly how big that could turn into a giant car wreck if we weren't careful and so very quickly we had to build this structure and um and now it's actually like a real company um we've got 130 people working there to make this silly little show um and we kind of need all of them or it turns into just a flaming disaster right right and let's talk about the writing process. How long do you guys take to, to like write a season? And you write it like in cycles, I believe, right? Well, we average um, an episode a week. Uh, what we do is we break it up into five cycles of four weeks, and we write four scripts at a time. Uh, two and a half weeks is coming up with ideas, and then the last week and a half is scripting four episodes. Um, and we always over script. We always over pitch. We always have way more than we need. And so then systematically, all the extra sketches get executed really ruthlessly. And as writers, it hurts really bad. Um, and we're pretty miserable. Really, and then we do that again. <laughs> <laughs> then we do it again. After we do the animatic, which is all the drawings, you know, uh, put into, into the edit. And you guys are losing sound the crowd. Everything. <laughs> you guys did your, did you guys Genius got, Bar came out? Okay. Guys, we're losing the crowd. Uh, okay. Did the Mariah Carey right. thing. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Not, not interested in the process, huh? All right, well. Um. Nobody wants to see how the sausage is made, huh? Uh. All right. <laughs> so what are some of the sketches that didn't make it into the show that uh, you're, you wish had? <sighs> oh, boy. Um, well, the, uh, this season we had a great, uh, well, "Quote unquote great sketch about Playmobil." Do you remember Playmobil? <laughs> and this, uh, is, this is what you're going to call out. <laughs> it's the only thing that came to mind. Right. Um, and the, so the Playmobil characters have a band. They're like a garage band, and they're trying to make it work. And then one of them just flips out and throws the piano through the window. And it was just funny to us because they all have these mold, these um, painted on smiles. But it's, also, it's a box set of like the Playmobil band. And this one character randomly is dressed as a clown. And it just, it was Mikey Day that said, why, what are these characters doing together? And so he imagined that the, the most normal one of them was like this dictatorial band leader who was constantly flipping out on the other ones and forcing them to use crappy instruments and then said, you're acting like a clown, you might as well look like one and put the wig on him. For it's not, it didn't work, it was just really funny to us. I think for me the hardest one to see go this season was something called Handjob Robot. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a robot voiced by Brecken Meyer oh, who, yeah. who disguised himself. Wait, but uh, you're, wait, you, you've already <laughs> revealed the headline. <laughs> Well, it starts right with an title. execution. Someone is a, they're attempting to execute someone in the electric chair, and they keep flipping the switch up and down. And they're like, I don't know what's happening. It's not working. And then the switch is revealed to be the genitals of a robot <laughs> who can only climax from, un, from people unknowingly masturbating him. So and he, he set says, up this guy for murder. <laughs> Got so him sent to prison. This guy. And they show the robot, like, they find the video surveillance from the nanny cam. The last minute he's saved by the governor, they show the robot, like, sneaking into the guy's bedroom and framing him. So, and then, like, posing as the, the electrocution his, switch. His, his catch, Brecken, do you remember his catchphrase? No. It was, uh, <laughs> it was thanks for the spanks. <laughs> but but after this whole sketch, it reveals the first hundred million dollar Kickstarter project ever. 
It got cut, guys, obviously, but you're never going to see it. Never made it past the automatic Oh, is that not going to air? Handjob robot. That's not airing? No. Did all that work for nothing? It'll be on the DVD. Yeah. It'll be on the animatics. I don't know why. The whole thing's based on a true story. Animatics weren't on that DVD. So who, who real, decides guys. what gets into the show and what doesn't? It comes oh, down to man. time, really. It ultimately is time. The show has got to be a finite amount of time, and so we'll cut everything together in the animatic before we send it to stages. You only have so much time to shoot things on stages, so you have to be really economical about what you send there. And we just we get our animatic down to the exact running time, and sometimes you have to cut stuff that you think works and keep stuff that maybe... Most stuff I write, I tend to notice gets cut, <laughs> um, usually after animatic, I think. You know, the saddest thing is that every time we've been nominated for a writing Emmy, it's on episodes Brecken didn't write. Yeah, no, no. Every time you're nominated, I'm nominated. Every time you won, <laughs> I was not a part oh, of it. Oh, that's fair. I'm the Susan Lucci of our episodes. It's for the big Susan Lucci fans out there. You're welcome. Well, what about in the writing room when uh, all these ideas are thrown out on a daily basis? Well, who, who's... Uh I'll take this one, Keith. Um, <laughs> there's a voting process at Robot Chicken. That has that, been in place since the beginning of the is, show. That has been in place since the beginning of the show. Okay, it just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> there is the, the process is we all write, and then at the end of the day, we go over what everybody has written, and then there's a vote. And it's three to one, right? Who gets a vote? Well, that's the weird part, the Tom. I'm vote. glad you asked. <laughs> it's a four-person vote. Now, I've been with the show pretty much since it started. I don't have a vote yet, but the votes are Tom, Doug. Oh, who's Doug, you ask? That's also what I ask. Doug is a co-head writer who hasn't written a skit on the show in maybe nine years. Ooh. And then, they, yeah, you stream this, Doug. Where are you? Huh? You watching at home? <laughs> Anyway, and then there is, uh, by the way, you're at home, you're not here. And then, so Sethi, Matt, who's co-creator, again, by the way, not here, couldn't bother to show up, and um, Tom and Doug. So those are the four votes. And they decide, is it three to one now? It's three to one. Three to one. So if it gets three votes, it goes in. So if you, you know. Or you're, four. Or, or four. four. If, you, if you get everybody, you're obviously in. And it takes a lot. And so you can spend a lot of time writing a skit all day. And then the worst part is Seth has this thing. I love Seth dearly, and he's probably my best friend in the world. But Seth, he has a way of reading a thing that makes him laugh. And he goes, <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and it's like a dagger in your fucking uh. heart. But it does because you spend so long and you're like, there's certain times you write something specifically for certain people who have votes. You're like, I know Seth, you'll love this. And then, ha ha, no. And that's it. Well, so there's a, home. Because there's a difference between a sketch that you find funny and a sketch that's going to work on the show. No, I disagree. I think whatever's funny goes in the show. But this isn't the time for that, guys. Um, so <laughs> we'll work that out at we'll our, work that out our therapy point. session. <laughs> That's well, how the show's written. Well, let's get positive. What are some of your favorite sketches that have appeared in the show over the years? Uh, there's, a, there's a new sketch on the new season called Dinosaur Train. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things that's happening right now. Oh, wait. And then another one that Shepard wrote, which is, I got, I'm, I'll like tip it. It's a spoiler. But it's, it's a cereal called Holios that Jesus is selling. And it's like the greatest theme song you've ever heard, ever. And it's been stuck in my head for weeks. Tom did. It's interesting because I play Jesus. Anytime, anytime. You <laughs> typically play Jesus. This was the one time that you didn't play Jesus. You know who played it? And this one was uh, Rob Paulson. Was Rob Paulson? Who's Rob Paulson? Yeah. Besides two of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah, he's, also, he's also uh, a Yaki, a Yako from uh, Animaniacs. And he played Jesus. And he, was, uh, he was Pinky on Pinky in the Brain. But he played Jesus on Robot Chicken. Just in this one sketch, yeah. The, the character I usually play. The character that you, you... It's your signature character. The character, right. One of my signature characters Rob yeah. played. Right, but he's in the commercial. Because I was busy? You were. I don't think I've been busy in the last two years. <laughs> That's... I have nothing but free time. <laughs> I'm here. That's like, none about? of that's true. Okay. We did it to hurt you, Whatever. is the answer. So, so Brecken, what's your favorite sketch over the years? Whatever, Keith. I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite, I have a lot of favorite uh, sketches on this show. I can't think of one right now. Um, hey, girl. I can't think of one that I really like. I like them all. I, I mean, honestly, I go back to the gummy bear as one of my favorite things. You wrote that, right? I did. 
I, I go back to that. And then Emperor's phone call, because I wrote that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, any of the Star Wars stuff is kind of my favorite stuff, because that's, like, not only is this job a dream job, but then to get to play with Star Wars, that that's ridiculous. Mm. Um, we did a sketch with a giraffe sinking in quicksand and going through the five stages of grief. <laughs> And that was a great one. It, 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 was, it was so well animated. One of our great Emmy-winning animators uh, did the animation on it, and the giraffe has so much pathos, and Seth was sobbing in the booth as the voice of this giraffe. Um, and you just see him sinking and sinking and finally coming to, re to accept his fate. And it's a, the kind of sketch we don't do all the time because it... It, was, it took a long time to sink that giraffe into that quicksand. <laughs> and usually we're like, eh, it's too, it's too long. Um, and so it, and it was just like um, this beautiful lesson about life. Yes. Uh, and we all learned something from it. Tom, Tom Shepard, do you have a favorite? Um, Say dinosaur train. No, it's not. I, I, it's currently animating, but we're doing a uh, sketch about Michael Bay's penis. <laughs> And it's maybe the most amazing thing I've ever seen. The sketch. Te technically, it's less about Michael Bay's penis and more about where Michael Bay gets the balls to make such amazing movies. So it's really more about his balls. But, but let me just say this. The, the, you know, the puppets break a lot. So we'll, if, we, if a puppet is put through a lot of motions in a sketch, we'll have to have several replacements. And we actually have 12... Michael Bay penises for the sketch. And Which, again, is exactly like real life. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Bay has 12 penises. Keith, it would work a lot better if we didn't have to pixelate that penis. <laughs> just... Oh, we've really? Thought about, <laughs> we've thought about just Big Black barring the penis, because no, honestly, Big Black bar is so much funnier than pixelating, because your brain imagines something so horrific under that big black bar like the bar the bar is so big and you can't see anything behind it you're like what is behind that bar well, well talk a minute for how is it working with the network like how does adult swim treat you guys and do you feel constricted with uh any uh this is the cutest this is the cutest solicitation but i will actually say this we've worked with a lot of different networks and studios and there is nobody like adult swim there's there's no other network and studio that has a culture the way that you guys do that have a sense of family, a sense of all of these things being aimed in the same direction. And, you know, at, for creators, for manufacturers of content, getting to work with you guys is, in, is incredible because the concerns they have, the restrictions that they have, they're all really reasonable. They're all based on something that's smart. They're not just like, we want to contain or, you know, refuse you. It's right. always been great. So what's coming up in the new season that's uh, exciting? And uh... Well, we're starting with our D, uh, third DC Comics special, um, which explores the love between Batman and Superman, <laughs> and also the conflict between those two heroes. Um, does it end with a hug? Maybe it does. Maybe it does. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait I know, a minute. I noticed that. I was hoping you weren't going to see that. Wait, hang on a second. I was hoping you wouldn't see that, Brecken. Wait a minute. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> filmmaker, 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 actor. <laughs> I, I, I've, I mean, I've, I've created shows. <laughs> I've, I've written on shows. And Brecken, you've actually starred in more films than I've probably anybody in this anybody room. In this anybody room, in this room. Right? This is I mean, you're a definitely filmmaker. <laughs> Everyone's a filmmaker. Whatever. I'm sure they can change that. No. You know what? We've got CG money. So you guys have uh, pretty much <laughs> <laughs> skewered So you're DC. okay with that, Keith? No, I'm not all okay right, with geez. it. I, I feel your pain, Brecken. Whatever. I feel, all right. So... I'm sorry we didn't notice that sooner, but, uh, but uh, so we've uh, you skewered uh, DC Comics and three specials and Star Wars. That's <laughs> we weren't even soliciting. Oh, oh there it is! Yeah! That's so cool. Babe, babe, get up there! Get up there! We'll right, fix it now. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Look, they did it. Wait, can you put? Can you put anything? <laughs> Can I see? Can I put something? You should have seen our business cards when we were like 18 years this old. It's not going to end well. 
It's just all swear words and pop culture addresses. <laughs> But you left, you left them both as filmmakers. This, this guy. Super hyper mega oh awesome God. filmmaker. Nice. <laughs> you know, you, you think you know somebody? Oh, well, I, I think the audience probably has some questions for you guys. Oh, are we doing that? Yeah. yeah, let's. Uh, yeah. All right. Is this a question about your Apple service? I think we got some mics. You guys uh, want to talk about the, the Apple TV? We'll get a mic to you. The control. integrated components of the VR system. Go systems. ahead and raise your hand. We'll bring you the mic. We have Con a question in the third row. Just hit row. control, propeller, escape. It'll bring it up. Shift Apple 3 takes a picture of your screen. Every time we have the mics, I feel like. What's up, dude? Hey, what's up? What's up, dude? All right, hit this. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, Apple Care. What? I don't care. What the hell? Stop. Hi. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, you want us to keep two going? things. Two things. Okay. Uh, what? Drop that beat. What? what? You no. bet. <laughs> <laughs> no. Let me see things. you freestyle. Bring We're it back freestyle. the other way. <laughs> what? what? Nothing. Sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, I tweeted Matt. Uh, Matt tweeted me back. Oh, cool. That's shocking, good, by the way. Because yeah, so if you tweet Matt, favorite. he's going to tweet you back. Yeah. Yeah, he's not. He's FYI, not. if you want to get mentioned by Wizmat S. Yeah, he's not doing anything. Tweet at Wizmat S. All he's doing right now is tweeting. Right. But this is more of a question. Did for you the, have a uh, question? Yeah, for Vice President here. Uh, for Keith? Yeah. Hey, Keith. Um, so Adult Swim has like a lot of like, they have a big culture when it comes to music and hip hop and like underground music and stuff. And I saw you guys are doing the, uh, the new drive-in theater with the uh, you know, uh, yes, Robot, Robot Chicken and Aqua Teen. But I was wondering, do you guys would ever think of doing like a festival or like something music related with all the artists because I saw you guys premiere the new Earl Sweatshirt video. I wonder if you guys would do something with like Flying Lotus or like festival wise. Uh, that's always a possibility. We'll talk to our marketing guys. Uh, we've been doing a, uh, a tour every year. We did a fun house last year. We have the drive in this year. So we're always looking for like new ideas. Uh, Metalocalypse was on tour yeah, for a while. Yeah, but you want a tour. You want a uh, Coachella of Adult Swim. Yeah, like the Coachella of Adult bands. Swim. That's what I want. Like, yeah. All right, thanks, Keith. All right, thanks. Uh, for Seth. Uh, That's me. Yeah. Not Seth Rogen or Seth Meyers or Seth MacFarlane. Not even Seth Rollins. <laughs> so um, back in uh, 2005, uh, when you uh, you know created a Robot Chicken. Basically, uh, what like editing programs did you use back then? Oh man, we did it all on the computers. We did it on like Final Cut, but we, we weren't into the Avid until third season. Everything was just being made on on like personal stuff. It's it's you know that's why I say to kids today, you literally have no excuse not to make a thing. When Breck and I were teenagers, we had a VHSC camera and like a fa like a, a wealth of equipment that we had to carry everywhere and then to do any kind of editorial work or music plugins or titles or anything it was the, the stuff just didn't exist in the same way you had to spend tons of money go to all different places now you have everything on your phone everything on your tablet if you want to make something there's zero excuse to make it cuz the distribution not doesn't matter anymore it's it's equal you can get anything to anybody you just got to make it thank you hell yeah Yes, you in the corner. Yes. Since it, uh, it came out in 2005, the way people get their content is different, kind of like Seth, you were saying. Are you guys looking into different formats, how you're releasing that content with, you know, Netflix, Amazon, releasing bulk of the entire season at one time? Well, some of the, some of the robot stuff is already available on Netflix, and I think that we've got... On Hulu. On Hulu, right? And then all of it's... On the site, don't you guys have a have a library on the site? Uh, it's on iTunes. Stuff's available on iTunes. But but the answer is yes. We're always thinking about different ways to get content out there. Our show got spread around via YouTube. People took single sketches and then just texted them to each other. People would talk to me about a sketch that we made without any knowledge of it being a part of a show. So you know, you hit people wherever you can. You connect to people wherever you can. Short form, long form, internet you know, broadcast. We used to debut episodes like a day early on the Adult Swim website, right? Yeah. Why did that stop? <laughs> uh, many reasons that I really can't go into right now, but... Uh. Okay. Ixnay on the Eason's Ray. But the answer is yes. Yes, always. Yeah. We got another question in the very back. Yes. yes. From the Apple Care. Yes. Oh, no, the girl, you're just... No, the... he's, he's working, okay. he's helping Hi. us. Is it about your earbuds? 
totally. Hi. Actually, this is a question from uh, my boyfriend. He's a writer, and he wants to know when you first started writing collaboratively, what were your like initial challenges in in doing that? Not having an HR person on site. Yeah. Really? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it really, uh, we really had to learn not to take things personally. It, it because especially <laughs> if you knew the personalities we were dealing with. Um, there was a lot of genuine anger when somebody would vote somebody else's thing out of the show. And it, you just have to learn to get really zen about it and let it go. And as soon as you're not precious about... Is that about, what I have to do? Is that what I have to do, Tom? <laughs> Maybe. I wasn't going to name any names. Uh, as soon as you stop being precious about your work, it, you tend to be much more productive and much more useful in a room. Um, so that's what I would say. Tom, do you... Collaborative writing. Uh, yeah, I mean everything you said is true, and uh, the, uh, you also need to take it in the room an extra step. A lot of times, at least in my case, a lot of stuff I write doesn't land unless I say it out loud or sing it out loud. So there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of embarrassing uh, That's true. moments of singing ridiculous songs that are in my head. <laughs> I'll remind you all about the dinosaur train. <laughs> there was a there was one sketch we did uh, Zeb wrote called uh, the fumbles sketch, which to me is one of the ones I can point at in the ten years that really came about in the room. You know, usually we write we we're all together, but we kind of write separate until the end of the day, and we get together and throw ideas together. But this was one where Zeb came up with the idea, but then it just started. Everyone kind of, you know, brainstormed about it in the room, and it became one. I don't know why. To me, it, it sticks out as one of the most fun times we had creating one particular sketch because it started with Zeb, but then everyone added something into it, and it became this really fun moment, which doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's a lot of kind of isolation where you're writing your own sketch and you're writing, you're hoping yours gets in over that person's and all that. But um, when it does happen, it's pretty great when you collaborate, when you can collaborate well with someone. Not with these guys, but, you know. No. I was thinking, I know you guys don't want it to be over, just keep doing the show, but uh, if it was to be over, would y'all do, like, a movie? Well, I don't necessarily think that one precludes the other. Simpsons is still in production, and they, they released a feature. Our, our whole thought about a feature is less what is the 90-minute version of Robot Chicken versus us creating something to make as a feature. Um, but we always, we, we like Robot, and we've, we've played with the, the, the size of the format over and over again from you know, quarter hours to full hours to half hours. So it's really just about having a story that's big enough to, you know, feel like it's worth going to the movies. But we talk about it all the time. The closest thing we had was a quasi-Wizard of Oz with the nerd, like, going into all kinds of pop. But it's just, I don't know, you don't want that narcoleptic kid to be your way into every <laughs> story. Oh, let's tell a story as soon as I sleep. Hey Hi. guys, uh, how did you guys get permission to do the Star Wars stuff and what's been their reaction? And has it changed with like Disney taking over or anything like that? Well, Disney hasn't retroactively been angry about any of the stuff we produced in the past. Um, and the way that we did it was by producing sketches uh, exactly the way we produce all the other sketches that are that fall under fair use and parody. And so once Star Wars became aware of our comedy, they approached us about collaborating with them, and then we were just very aggressive in our pitching. And so instead of doing the short-form interstitial things that they had proposed, we said, what about, well, Matt Senreich actually said in a meeting, what about a half hour that's all robot chicken dedicated to Star Wars? And that's how the first special came up. And then everybody saw that it was fun and liked it and that we love the brand and that all the jokes we make are actually really supportive of it and that there's an incredible symbiotic relationship between parodying things and sincere fan support of it. Um, so nothing's really changed since Disney. And George Lucas was a fan back in... Yeah, we, we talked George into some really hilarious stuff. <laughs> but it just went to show he... He said to us, everyone's been having so much fun with Star Wars for his entire career, and he wanted to be able to have fun with Star Wars, too. So he, he like, let us collaborate with him on making silly things. All right, we have time for two more questions. We have a question in the front row. Uh-oh, the pressure's on. Who's got the questions? Hey, What's I up, Port Washington? Yeah, yeah. 
Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was just a, yeah. That's what my shirt says, Seth. Um, I'm not on the Spirit yeah. Squad, man. I came here to talk to you. I was wondering about how you guys time the segments you do because it seems like it takes a lot of time to you know film. Sometimes you have like 30 second segments. Sometimes you have like two minute segments. I was just wondering how you all time that out, like when you do the actual production and the it's, voiceovers. Sketch by sketch, it's a guesstimate. Whenever a sketch gets written, we usually estimate how long you'd probably spend on that subject or what you'd be willing to contribute from the total show real estate yeah. towards that particular Some, thing? Sometimes it's really passive aggressive because we decide the length of the sketch <laughs> in the writer's room as we're approving things. And so sometimes we'll All right, we'll I'd say of, yes to that yeah. at 15 seconds. Yeah. Oh, you wrote a two-minute sketch? If it was 30 seconds, we could say yes to that. Um, but but ultimately, all the decisions about the total length of any of the sketches or the show itself comes into the finite amount of time that we have for broadcast distribution, which is a quarter hour. So roughly 11 minutes and 30 seconds to under 12 minutes. But that's the total amount of time that we could put on the network in between their ad breaks that are, uh, you know, the show is paid for by advertisements, essentially. So you have to fit into that space. And so then you're editing the show, and if it's on a either side of that length, you're like, we better trim this out. So we'll go through, Tom and I'll go through and just pull seconds out of a show, pull frames out of a show. You can actually compress the entire show by like 1%. <laughs> if yeah, you, we try if not to do to. that. It's, <laughs> it's really, it makes things really awkward yeah. and uncomfortable. But. You have a performer that speaks low and slow, and it's not something that's, that's going to make the sketch funnier. You'll like 10% their voice. Yeah, once in a while, we'll, we'll uh, instead of cutting an entire sketch out, we'll take, we'll find a joke that we like, the gargoyle sketch this season. We had, it was like a yeah. two-minute sketch that we turned into a 30-second channel flip. Well, you follow what's funniest about the sketch. You say, well, this is all completely superfluous information. You just need that joke, and then everything else can get cut. Then you wind up getting down to your time. But we decide in the writer's room an estimate. We're like, I think this is 10 seconds, probably like 40 seconds. All right, who has the last question? Whoa, last, last question. question. Last one. Better be good. Is it about the Apple she Watch? Oh, snap, you're completely rethinking your plan at the Apple Store. Yeah. Maybe you're going to hear our last question yeah. instead. We can get you, and we can get you. We have two, actually. Yeah. Two last questions, no pressure. It okay, better I'll be go amazing. First. <laughs> Whoa. Just, oh. All right, go first. Bull by the <laughs> horns. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There you go. Let's do it. Didn't mean to Hi. start a cat fight. Right? Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anyways, was there an actor or an actress that you had on the show that was your absolute favorite, or can you not say that, or wished you had somebody on there? Uh, it's not like favorites. We've just had people do things we didn't expect them to do. Mm -hmm. I, really, uh, well, I, I just really liked Brecken Meyer when he was an actor. <laughs> You mean b before I became a super hyper mega awesome filmmaker? Yeah. Oh. Well, I had to grow. Uh, my favorite this season, uh, we got Martin Freeman to do the show. Or I, I don't know how that happened, actually. But he was so good and awesome at everything, as you would expect. And it was just like, well, I wish we had more for him to do. I, uh, we had, occasionally, you know, we, occasionally we get our friends to do it, which is really how the show started getting people. We, we were using our friends, but I was lucky enough to work with uh, J.K. Simmons and ask J.K. to come on the show, and he's done the show a couple times now, and every time that guy is just a triple threat. He can do everything. Like, he's, by the way, he's the yellow m and I don't know if you guys know that. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. He's an Oscar winner. He's the yellow m and m Yeah, he, he was just went for on Oz. Whiplash. It's bananas. This guy can do everything. So anytime we, he comes in. We had into him the play room, the Master Chief. Right? <laughs> so yeah. he, he, anytime Not just he the comes Master in, Chief, but the Master Chief trying to figure out how the zipper on his suit works. Yeah. <laughs> we, we also. But not, but not wanting. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. But not wanting Cortana to be able to have a heads up view as he was peeing. Who's your, you have a favorite? Um, come in? Well, you know, we had Jared Harris on this year, who was really incredible. And I was super excited to have him because I worked with him a long time ago. But the, one of the biggest surprises that we had, and I guess it shouldn't have been a surprise. Do you guys know the actor Chris Pine? So Chris, real handsome, leading man, movie star kind of thing. I never would have thought that he was really funny. But he came in to do our show, and he was so hilarious and so awesome, so good and smart and like willing to do anything, but also really skilled and took very little direction to give you something amazing. Um, and then after that, I started seeing him do all these comedies. He did, uh, 
Yeah, he's a tremendous he's a performer. Really funny guy. Honestly, he could do anything. Yeah. Adam West and Burr Ward. Yeah. That was probably the, the giddiest day in the recording booth for, I know you and I were like hugging and, you know, high fiving all day long. Yeah, having having nothing to do with the guest star. No, but I mean, that's a normal well, day. Well, not just because but. it was both of them, it was both of them playing those characters. Like Adam was playing Batman and Burt Ward playing Robin. It just, and them yeah. saying the things that they said, but saying it on our show. <laughs> it's so silly. <laughs> Yes. Hi. Uh, hey, what's up? Hi. I was wondering what direction you uh, want to see the show take in the future, in, like the far future. You know, we always talk about doing a solid half hour with no jokes that's just like a lifetime drama about somebody dealing with a, a long-term debilitating disease. And we keep, we keep saying that that's a terrible idea, but it keeps coming up every year. We're like, what if we just put in one episode that end to end, none of the sketches are funny? Yeah, give me the heads up on that one, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll sell it the I got you some poor warning. Yeah. warning. Uh, but other than that, probably we're just going to keep doing the same thing. Yeah, we just try and find other people to contribute their voice and perspective to all this stuff. We, it's it's insane that the show is on and that you guys like it. So we just we're not going to try and really change it. Yeah, we don't know if we could anyway. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, have this a was wide, a whole accident. We don't have a wide skill set here. So. None of this happened on purpose with planning or just opportunity plus hard work. Well, uh, congratulations on eight great seasons. Thanks for giving Thank us you. a great show. Thank you, Keith. Uh, new special on the 18th. On the 25th, the new season starts. They're both available on iTunes. And thanks to Apple for having us today. Apple yeah. Store! Thank you. Thank Genius you. Bar!